Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. So let's say you have a pet, could be dog, cat, whatever, and you come home and you just know that they're they're trying to they're trying to tell you something. You know, you can see it in their eyes. You can just you get you feel that something's there. They want you to know something, but you're not really sure what it is. Are they really trying to tell you something? We're going to talk with somebody who can really answer that question as an animal communicator. And I've experienced this before with her. Animals communicate. Some of us can pick up on that communication. Actually, it's believed that all of us can if we have the training. Marianne McKiernan is back with us from Telling Tales. Welcome. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm great. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. And I always wondered about this. You know, what... What are animals are, are, are trying to tell us? If we think that they are trying to communicate, is it usual that they really are? Oh, absolutely. And sometimes it's something simple, like my water dish is empty or I need to go outside. Sometimes it's more complicated, like um, so there's something wrong with my body and I need you to pay attention. So it varies. Hmm. Uh what are some of the telltale, no pun intended, signs <laughs> that uh, your animal is trying to tell you something? Well, for instance, my Great Dane last night kept coming over and sticking his face in mine and bugging me. I was trying to work on something and I finally thought, pay attention. He's trying to get your attention. He's not just being annoying. And I realized that his water dish was completely dry. So that was an easy one. But often they're trying to tell you something more important and you need to pay attention. I had a dog once that was limping or not limping. His leg was sore, but he told me his leg was sore, but he wasn't limping. And the people said, well, no, he seems fine. But hmm. they waited a few weeks and then took him to the vet because he started limping. And it turns out he had bone cancer in that leg. Now, I don't know if they'd taken him right away, if the dog would have had a different outcome. But, you know, he was telling them there's something wrong with me and I want you to pay attention. Wow. It's almost a little uneasy knowing yeah. that they're trying to tell us something and we're not listening. And they have they have better skills than we do in that they don't have to focus on all the other stuff that we focus on. Right. If, if we could not worry about what we wear, walk around with no shoes on, we're always grounded. <laughs> uh and not worry about life like humans do. The mortgage, the car payment, the rent, whatever it might be, what other people are thinking about, it, all that other stuff. Amazingly, we would be getting signs and signals from not just animals, but other people. Right. I had a dog once that was very sensitive to thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. And most animals are, but this dog was like super sensitive. And she'd start getting restless and crying. And when I talked to her, she said, they don't pay any attention until they look outside and see black clouds. So they were waiting way too long to put on her thunder shirt. And um, if it was a really severe thunderstorm with hail and things like that, they would give her um, a medication. And so I was actually sitting there when she started pacing and whining. And I said, I think she's telling us there's a thunderstorm coming. And the sky was blue and it was beautiful and there were no clouds. And 20 minutes later, a black storm had come in, it was pouring rain, and she was right. And so the people said, oh, okay, we're going to start paying attention, putting her thunder shirt on her when she starts pacing. Hmm. You know, during the 4th of July holiday, my dog, uh, not like many, you know, sensitive to fireworks, but he was hearing things that I wasn't hearing. And I kind of did just what you're talking about. Obviously, when it was loud... I tried to take him outside to go to the bathroom and he would just turn around. I was like, mm, 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 I'm not going out. Yeah. No. And he would yeah. just pull, pull me back into the garage and into the house. Understandable. But there was other times where we were out there and I know he was hearing things in the distance that I wasn't picking up on. And maybe if I listened carefully, I might hurt a, you know, a little, but to me, that's not, doesn't seem, seem like a big deal to him. Yeah. He's yeah. He's on alert for whatever reason. Yeah, their hearing is so sensitive, and we don't take that into account sometimes. People do mm. silly things like taking them to fireworks, which is just mean. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Um, 
I, I, my smoke alarm went off the other day. I'm like, I feel so bad. Like, I can't imagine, <laughs> can't imagine what they, they would be going through at that moment. Wow. Yes, exactly. Exactly. What are some of the things that you have been told by animals that, um, that surprised you? Um, let's see. I had a dog once that, um, was very, they couldn't figure out why he was acting it was new and on walks um he was getting very protective and sort of leash aggressive aggressive this actually happened to me twice and i was sitting with the person and saying you know has anything in your life changed and they were like no nope, everything's the same and the dog said i have to protect the new one and i said does that mean anything and the woman said i'm pregnant i'm about 12 weeks along so she wasn't showing but the dog knew they can sense changes in our chemistry and our bodies. And the dog was protecting the baby. And I had that happen twice with people that were just newly pregnant. So that, that surprised me that the dog knew that and could pick up on that. Well, and communicated it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm protecting. But the first one said, I'm protecting the new one. And the second one said, there's a baby. And I said, do you have a small child? No, no, but I'm, I'm pregnant. We haven't started telling people yet, but the dog knew. And that was validated. Uh, yeah. Let you know that the uh, baby was on the way. Yeah. Yeah. And so I chatted with the dog and said, your mom has your back. You don't need to protect her right now. She's fine. Um, it's great that you want to protect her, but you don't need to do that. And, you know, we had a chat about what the dog really should do. How do you know? Marianne, that you're actually making the communication connection. When I get validation like that from the person, because, okay. you know, otherwise you think I'm making that up. She's tall and thin. She doesn't look pregnant, but, you know, then you get the validation and it could have been, you know, the dog said the new one's coming. It could have been something else entirely. Um, but when they validate it and say, nope, that's exactly right. That's exactly what happened. The dog loves frozen strawberries. The cat's favorite treat is cantaloupe. Then you know you're you're actually connecting. Hmm. What if there's no validation? You just have something. You've received something. Is it just you? You go on your your you go on your faith and yourself, right? And sometimes it doesn't make sense in the context of the conversation. I had a dog once that kept saying cupcakes, cupcakes, and showing me cupcakes, and I'm like, I don't know what this means. So I said to the person. Does cupcakes mean anything to you? Because my job is to be the voice for the animal and not necessarily to try to interpret what they're saying. And the woman said, means nothing to me. We don't have cupcakes. So, you know, I just chalked it up to being wrong. Well, she sent me an email a few days later. It turns out her husband took the dog with him to work often. And on Fridays, one of his coworkers always brought in cupcakes for a treat. And of course, the dog was always told, no, no, this is for the people. You don't get a cupcake. So he was wanting a cupcake the dog wanted a cupcake yeah so the, the, it made sense to the husband but didn't ring any bell with the wife and i guess he'd never told the wife oh yeah we always have cupcakes on fridays wait a second <laughs> so <laughs> so the dog always had a cupcake on fridays but didn't the, the husband the people, didn't tell yeah the people had cupcakes on fridays but the dog never got one because of course they were chocolate and that's bad for dogs. And he was always told, we're sorry, you can't have a chocolate cupcake. So I said, you know, maybe you need to bring him a special treat on Friday so he doesn't feel left out. Wow. Wow. Um, what do you say to people that say, come on, <laughs> you know, are you re how are you really talking to an animal? Right. Aren't you making this up? Didn't you look me up on Facebook and see the pictures and know that we go for walks every Sunday in the park with a big lake. Um, I tell people I don't want a lot of information before the call. Sometimes I just have a first name. I don't want to hear the animal's whole story because I don't want to be in my head. If I start hearing that the horse has been having repeated issues with colic and the vet's been out a bunch of times, then I get in my head when they say now his foot hurts and I start thinking, well, it could be related and so I don't want that information. I want it to come through in the context of the conversation. Um, and I don't Google my clients. I don't look them up. I don't try and stalk them and figure things out. But it's 
I tell people it's wacky to me too. When I get something that's that off the wall, like cupcakes, that's when I think, okay, I am mm. really connecting. Mm. Um, but- or the dog that had cancer in its leg. You know, those are just things I couldn't have made up. And, you know, especially with the dog that was ill, I wouldn't have made up. That's that's yeah. unethical. <laughs> sure. And and the cupcake thing, very specific. You know, yes, it's not- exactly. People don't normally have cupcakes on Friday. That's, you know, that's right. You know, some trend tradition there, you know, you know, others have others uh, very specific. How do you liken this to mediumship, like a psychic medium? Would you say there's, there's some overlay there, some parallels in terms of, you know, some believe that energy is being read when, when a psychic is reading somebody. Yes, absolutely. I think it's very similar. It's just, I do it with animals. They do it with people. So Mm -hmm. I'm sure that there are some people that can do both. Um, But I think we all kind of stick where our hearts and our skills are. I, um, I truly believe in, in energy and more and more as life goes on, I see it in action and I've worked with psychics for, for decades. I'm talking, there's some that aren't legit out there, but ones that really are and they're friends and I, and the biggest names on the planet. I'm skeptical. I want to see it. I'll even push them even further, even harder. Yeah. Um, It wasn't until my mom passed five years ago that I got specific signs from her and still do when I ask. Oh, that's so cool. I really do. I could fill 15 podcasts, even in that, that amount of time that she's been gone where she sends messages with her name and you, you can't uh, even make it up. Like, and if it supports you that a butterfly goes by and you say, well, you know, that's my grandmother. Good. I'm wonderful. Uh, I want more. And I, I get those specifics, but my point here all is it's the energy when somebody's not here anymore. I believe their energy has never gone away. It's just, it's here. You need to tap right. into it or you need to listen. How do you listen? Get rid of the stuff around you. Yeah. And you have to trust that what you're getting is true. Yeah. Well, I trust yeah. in, in in the messages and signals I get because you know, like, I asked her for a sign. I'm like, give me something. It's been a while, mom. What do you got? I changed my modem here in this office underneath this desk. They, they just deliver a modem from the cable company. Turn it upside down. It's four digits dash her name dash two digits. That's That's amazing. And if you look at those digits, I'll laser this for you. If you look at those digits, they all come up to 7 and 11, 7 and 11. What does that mean? I thought about it, got nothing, tried. Of course, I played them in the lottery, still do. Nothing came (laughs) up. And then I asked my daughter. She was 15 at the time. I'm like, what do you think? She goes, probably your dad. She's never met him. He passed when I was 21. And then I looked deeper into it. Uh, since it was so long ago, three, four is the March 4th is when he was born seven. He died on seven 11 Ooh. of a heart attack Ooh. sudden. So I told my mom, that was a sign for me. Go to the cardiologist. Never been to one. That was two months ago. He identified, you know, some, some little things here and there. I need to keep my, my eye on. All right. For anybody that says, well, all right, whatever. I walk into the cardiologist and say, hi, I'm here for my appointment. Intake woman at the window. I look at her shirt, has her name. It's my mom's name. Oh, I I can't. You You can't make this stuff up. I can't, you know, punch holes in that if you want. But I'm going to I'm going to take that as a sign that that my mom was saying, hey, you need to take care of yourself. All right. And that's why I'm sending this to you. Um, That's amazing. But but the scene, the, the, the signals and the signs are there. If you're you're open to them, uh, but I don't think we see them because we're all so busy and then things are going on. Has has there been times, Marianne, where you can't read an animal? Sometimes, and I never charge. If the person feels like I'm not connecting, you know, I'll say, okay, we'll just call it a day. Um, I think the ones that I find are most stubborn are cats. Sometimes cats are like, I'm not talking to you. I don't know you. I don't know. We don't have a connection. So Um, it doesn't happen very often though. You know, we can, sometimes people want to start right away with the questions about an animal's health. 
And for an animal, sometimes that's very invasive. It's like going up to somebody at a cocktail party and saying, so tell me about that operation you had last week. I mean, that's a little too much to start with. So I'll say, Fluffy isn't ready to talk about how he's feeling. So let's start with something simpler. And so then we can, you know, have five minutes of a connection and then talk about the harder stuff. Um, but talking about signs, I had a dog once who had passed before her owner got home from a trip and the owner was just so, so, so sad. And I said, you know, the dog said you were connected on the plane. You were talking your hearts are connected. She's like, I know, but I just miss him. And I just wish I could get a sign. So I said to the dog, okay, she really, really needs a connection sign. Give me something, please. And so the dog showed me a green tennis ball. And she said, he played with tennis balls. We have them all over the house. No, no big revelation there. And I said, well, that's what he's showing me. So just look for a green tennis ball. I think you're going to find it in a place where it wouldn't be. It's not going to be in the toy basket or under the couch. So two days later, she calls me and says, you're never going to believe this. But of course I do. His urn with his ashes on it were on the table when she was talking to me. And two days later, she went to put them back on the mantelpiece where they had been. And there's a green tennis ball sitting on the mantelpiece where the urn had been. So I was very happy with that dog for giving her such a clear sign. Wow. That he was still with her. It's weird that you're saying this because before I left my place this morning, I look on the floor and there's a green tennis ball. I don't even know where it came from. It's in the, <laughs> it's in the hallway, which is an odd place for it. I have two cats and a dog every other week. I don't know where it, and, and the cats play with tennis balls. Where that, <laughs> and the dog hasn't been around for a week. So where did the, um, I don't know. It, I'm not even kidding. Is, it's, it's Is it a sign from a past pet or is your mom? laughing at you and giving you some new signs i don't know and you're gonna have to think about it <laughs> but it was just in the middle of nowhere and now you're talking about it and i i wouldn't yeah. have thought of it until you said it but just before i walked out the door i'm like that's odd where did that tennis ball come from and why is it in the middle of you know the walkway like odd yeah. strangeness hmm uh do you believe that our animals are leaving us signs like not presents, if you will, but things to, to, to get our attention. I think so. Hmm. Um, but I think you have to pay attention because it's easy to walk by the tennis ball and just yeah. think, oh, there's a tennis ball on the floor. I think we have to notice when things seem a little out of place or a little odd and think, oh, what does this mean? Is this more than just a green tennis ball? Yeah. To connect. And it. again, like you say, that's getting out of your head, being still, you know, really connecting and thinking and not just letting the noise come to you. How uh, proficient, if you will, do you feel that you are in connecting with, with pets that have passed over? I have pretty good luck with that. If it's been a long time, it's a little harder. Um, I don't know that anybody could connect with my childhood pets, but um, you know, if they're within the last few years, we can usually have a connection. And sometimes it's very brief. The animal will say, um, I stayed with you until you got the new kitty and I made sure that everything was okay. And now I've moved on and I'm in a new body. Sometimes they surprise you with, I'm in a horse body now. I always wanted to try being in a horse. So that's mm. always funny. It's funny you should say that. Cause oh, I was, yeah. I was just going to ask you about uh, pets coming back as other pets. Yeah. I've had a couple of people that, um, are sure that the animal is a reincarnation of a past pet because of something the animal um, does, some particular preference of a food, some odd behavior. Mm. Um, I have to say that's not my best thing to say, oh, definitely this animal is your past animal. There are animal communicators that are really good at that. We all have things that we are better or not so good at. And past lives isn't one of mine, but mm. if the person says, this is my animal from um, a past life because of X, Y, Z, I can ask the animal, is this true? And they'll say, yeah. And, you know, maybe give me some bit of information from that other life that makes sense to the person. I, I truly believe that one of my cats is a previous cat. And, uh, but all rescues, but this cat that I got, 
most recently, a year and a half ago, it was for a reason. It was to help heal in my family. And he is like the cat before him that I put down five years ago, uh, mushy, orange tabby. And some could say, well, orange tabbies were like that. Um, it's it's him. <laughs> I really, and I'm not trying to believe that or look into that. I just, I just take it for face value. These are the signs. This is the personality. This is what's going on. Um, I, I believe it's there. It could be my previous cat coming back. Yeah. Especially if he has a message for you or a reason for being there and helping you heal is certainly a great reason. Mm. What's the process when somebody wants a reading from you, whether it's connecting with uh, an animal that's passed on, or if it's um, just connecting with your, your, your current pets, how does it work? Um, they can either call me on my phone, which is 303-757-6918, or they can go to my website, um, telling-tales.com, and that's T-E-L-L-I-N-G-T-A-I-L-S.com. And I'd be happy to chat with them if they have questions, if they need, you know, maybe a little bit more on how the process works specifically in their situation. We can chat before we set up the appointment, but I'm happy to do that. Aside from getting information, potentially closure, I believe there's so much going on here. Medical issues. Let's say you suspect something. You don't want to dig into invasive tests just yet. Maybe you want to tip your doctor off to something. Um, or maybe you have a rescue and you want to know what their life was like and maybe how you can support them better. Uh, all of this is in, in your wheelhouse. This is These are right. some of the things you deliver, right? Right. Exactly. Hmm. Yep. Every every pet I've had has been a rescue. So I've always wondered about, you know, what their life was like. You know, uh, uh, my dog, there has been times when, when I first got him, um, he didn't really like me. Now we're good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that maybe there was a, a, you know, maybe a male situation uh, previously uh, in, that maybe stood between us until he got used to me and all of it. I right. don't know. I Right. Definitely and sometimes it's it's trauma and we have to talk about the past and how to release that. Sometimes we have to let the animal know that it's it's in the past. You're safe now. This is your permanent home. Your people are going to take good care of you and you can release whatever happened in the past. And That's I have friends who do that kind of energy work that can help with trauma release, um, physical things versus me just telling them you can release it. Sometimes they need a little Reiki or a different kind of energy work. Yeah. Yeah. And that's in the last few years, I didn't even know that uh, as what I learned that Reiki can be done. Energy healing can be done for pets. I had no idea. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's... Yeah. Well, like you say, it's all energy. So why not? Why yeah. not? And I've done had Reiki done, uh, felt so much better, lighter, more clarity and all of that. So to know that it can support our pets as well. Fantastic. Uh, once again, Mary, what's the website? Tellingtales.com, T-E-L-L-I-N-G-T-A-I-L-S. Always love having you on here. And Thank you so much. You are so clear to the point, and this is one of your purposes in life, without a doubt, and that's that's why we made you our professional of the year. Thanks again. Thank you, Steve. Bye-bye. We'll, we'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. 
We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.